Hi and welcome back, it's Lois here. Um, today I'm going to be showing you my lovely new Japanese calligraphy brush. It's a goat hair brush. The hairs are, are very long, um, about three inches, and it holds an awful lot of water and an awful lot of paint. I'm going to wet my paper all over, but not saturated everywhere. I have left dry patches because I want to um, have a mixture of soft and hard edges. Now I'm just going to play now and just mess around and see what happens. I'm starting off with randomly brushing um, sweeps of firstly raw sienna then burnt sienna across the sort of sky area and the foreground. I'm just really wanting to see what will happen um, as the paint diffuses and just to see if there's anything sort of happens that I like the look of. Now. Um, the sky area, I'm trying to put in um, a combination of Prussian blue, perylene green and uh, burnt umber. To start with I had too much green there so I've now put in quite strong Prussian blue over that, that too greenish sky and I'm just going to see what happens. It's all running down and I've got a nice thickness of paint there now so I'm just going to tilt the board and see if it will run into um, an interesting flowing sky. It looks like it's starting to, so that's good. As you can see, there's a lot of paint and water there, so I'm just going to, with a tissue or a paper towel, uh, wipe across the bottom as the paint flows down, just to mop it up. I'm just going to use the brush to encourage it down. Um, across towards the end of the paper where it wasn't wet in those particular areas. Now I've flattened the board and I'm just going to go in with some um, Prussian blue and um, burnt umber and just put in some dark across the bottom because that usually is quite a, a good thing to do. Um, the foregrounds are often darker than the rest so I'm just going to put that in and, and see what happens as it diffuses. Again I'm going to tilt the board because I've ended up with an awful lot of paint and water because there's so much water and paint holding capability in the brush but you can see it's creating some quite nice marks now. Now while it's still all wet I'm going to put in some uh, background tree shapes and hope that they will diffuse out. I've flattened the board again um, because I'm hoping to sort of keep the trees from running too far. I don't mind them running a little bit and diffusing out because that should give them quite a nice shape. I'm sort of thinking about putting something in on this right side but I quite like the right side empty so um, I think I'll leave it at that and I think now it needs to dry and I shall dry it flat and um, see what happens and see what see what I'm left with really but I think it's looking quite nice at the moment it should diffuse well well here it is it's completely dry and I quite like the look of it now, I like this group of trees here. This will be my focal point. I'm going to just put in some branches, um, trunks, etc, leaning over towards the left as the wash has dried that way. Um, the same for these trees. I've got some spots in the sky. I'm going to turn them into birds. One there as well. Now, I do like the glow in the sky. It's like a sunset. What I don't like is this mark up here, it's sort of like a cauliflower. Um, I think I'll spoil it if I try and change it so I'll just cut the painting off at that point. Now I'm going to take a squirrel mop and with clean damp water I'm going to run it across the bottom of the trees and that should give a soft hopefully sort of misty-ish look to the trunks when I put them in. Now it's just a matter of making up a nice dark almost sort of blackish mixture of paint um, not too wet and not too thick so it flows nicely um, on the rigger and then just carefully um, painting in the trees so that the trunks are slightly thicker than the rest and that as you get towards the the end of the branches you taper off so they look nice and thin and try and get them so that they 
sort of tangled together. Um, I'm trying to, as I said, lean the trees over towards the left because that's the sort of shape in which um, my wash has dried. Your wash might dry slightly differently so it's a matter of looking at the shapes that you've got for your trees and then following those shapes. And if any of it goes in a bit dark, you can just carefully blot out with a tissue while it's still wet. Or if it's too light, you can go in with a slightly thicker paint. Just make adjustments as you go. Now I'm just going to put a bit more water underneath the trees with the squirrel mop and then I'm going to touch in some dark paint and some burnt sienna just across the bottom because I feel that that area there just needs a little bit more detail. I don't want to do too much to it but just needs a little bit more, not detail, um, sort of variety of, of colour just to pull that area together a little bit more. It's all experimentation with something like this, so it's it's certainly worth, if you think of something, of, of it's worth trying it. Some things will work, some things don't, but you'll always learn something from the experience. Because my board's at an angle, um, the paint has sort of pulled along where I put that brush stroke of water, and so I'm going to encourage it to run even further down. I think you can see as it's running there, sort of towards the bottom, it's actually creating quite a, a nice line there for me um, of texture and interest. I'm just going to keep going, building up those tree branches until I think they look thick enough. Um, until I like the look of, of, of the grouping. It takes a little bit of a while, but there's no rush. So I'm just going to soften that bottom line in a few places because I think it was looking a little bit straight. Um, and that's just a clean, damp brush and just kind of disrupting that straight line a little tiny bit just to add texture. Right, I'm just going to get the birds in over those spots. Um, oh, the paint's a bit, a bit, a bit wet, a bit thick. Dab it off very carefully so I don't smudge it. Um, and just go in again uh, with less paint on the brush. I've wiped it off on the palette. Then we've got that little spot over there. Just put a bird on there. I think that looks all right. Um, now, lastly, I've got these far distant, um, well, slightly further distant trees. I'm just going to put in some branches. Sorry, my hand's in the way there. It's an awkward, awkward area to get to around the tripod and camera stand. Uh, but I'm just going to put in some sort of trunks of these sort of um, wind-swept hawthorn type trees. Um, 
to make sure that they look quite strong because against that white patch of background um, they stand out quite quite well there so I'm going to get them in nice and dark there because I think it will look very effective. I think I just need to go a little bit darker on some of the trunks here on these um, slightly closer trees just to balance them up with the nice darks that I got on the, the trees on the far left. And I think I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that done. Um, again, it's quite a shame about that mark across the top, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this painting and I'm going to crop that off the top. Um, <clears throat> I think if I try to change it by going over the wash I think I'd end up in making a bit of a mess there. So as I say I shall crop this painting if it ever gets framed um, and here's what it would look like if it was cropped. So we get rid of that nasty mark and it's quite a nice painting. I think it's got sort of shades and inspiration from Ortega and some of my own style as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and um, I'll see you soon. Take care. Happy painting. Bye.